We're going to talk today about conjugate uh, congenital hyperbilin hyperbilirubinemia. Long word. Anyway, there are a few types, but what we're looking to look at are the ones that are connected to bilirubin or conjugated, and the ones that are unconjugated. Uh, we're looking at if you look at the big guy here. Big guy has got he is rubbing his belly, so he's belly rubbing. And because he's belly rubbing, that is, these guys over here are connected to bilirubin. And one guy says, hi, I'm Dubin. And this guy says, I'm Johnson. And you've got Dubin-Johnson syndrome, which Dubin-Johnson syndrome has, is connected to bilirubin. So it's got conjugated bilirubin, also unconjugated, but the, the, main, the main thing to look for is, is conjugated on the exam. And the reason I am coloring these shirts dark green is because the liver is dark green. It's often considered black liver, but it's really dark green in pathology, but either way. If it's a dark liver or green liver, then that is Dubin Johnson. So that's what you look for. This often shows up a little later in life. You got a 21-year-old college student who's complaining of right upper quadrant uh, pain, epigastric pain. Maybe they've gone to the family practitioner. They said, "No, it's nothing to worry about." They've got some slight jaundice um, of the sclera and maybe underneath the tongue, but you know, nothing really, you know, to be concerned about. But when you do the labs, you've got increased direct and indirect bilirubin, increased liver enzymes, mildly. But they also have with a ratio of coproporphyrin uh, of type 1 and type 2 of a 5 to 1 ratio. So we're going to draw a little badge and say cop. And we say 5 to 1 of type 1 to type 3 of coproporphyrin. So that's something to look for. This is an autosomal recessive disorder, so we're going to write an auto, and auto is driving up the leg, and it's got two little R's on it, which is recessive, autosomal recessive. In the micropathology of this, look for central labular uh, lysosomal granules with brown pigments, or catecholamines. It's uh, benign, like I said, autosomal recessive. It's a defective uh, canicular bilirubin excretion, so that's where you're having a problem. So that is connected to bilirubin, so in turn is the conjugated type. Now the unconjugated type, you've got Gilbert over here, which also can be Gilbert. That's how it's supposed to be said, but it says Gilbert, and that's how it looks like on the test. So however you want to remember it. It says, I'm okay. It is benign. But what you'll find is maybe a 19-year-old presents, uh, has them yellowing of the eyes, and uh, usually comes on with stress or lack of calories, uh, t maybe especially after a 24-hour fast, you'll see increase in serum bilirubin, unconjugated, but they'll have normal liver, liver enzymes. Uh, it is an autosomal dominant, so we'll put an auto driving up the leg, and it's got a big R, which is for dominant. Uh, he's okay, but the, the whole... Uh, theme of Kriegler, Najjar, and, and Gil, uh, Gilbert is there's a problem with glucon uh, glucuronal transferase. So that's what they're stepping on over here. You've got glucuronal transferase. Now this is a, it's a low glucuronal transferase with, uh, with Gilbert's or uh, Gilbert's but it's a deficiency with Kriegler and Ajar. See, and with Kriegler and Ajar, what you're looking for, it is a major jaundice, shows up from infancy, so very yellow in there, and it's not a very good prognosis. It's an early death uh, in most cases, and that's where he says. I'm not okay. Because this deficiency in the uh, glucuronal transferase causes a buildup 
of the unconjugated bilirubin. This buildup actually, if it gets too high, can cause buildup in the brain called connicterus, and that's why I'm making kernels. Doesn't this look like a ear of corn? Kind of, maybe not. Kernels, connicterus, anyway, however you want to remember it. This is usually with amounts over 20 milligrams per deciliter. That's a lot. Uh, the only way uh, treatment for this is a lot of phototherapy, 12 hours a day, a liver transplant or plasma exchange. There's two types of Kriegler in a jar. In a jar. Let's see. In a jar. Type 1 is autosomal recessive and it's got a poor prognosis and type 2 is autosomal dominant and either way they both have a deficiency in glucuronyl transferase.